Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is the 1946 Cleveland Buckeyes Negro American League Baseball season. Again, the Buckeyes were playing in the in the Negro American League, the junior circuit of Negro League Baseball. Most uh, home games were played at League Park on the east side of Cleveland, and, and there were some games also played downtown at Cleveland Municipal Stadium. The, the Buckeyes in 1946 had a tough year. They finished in third place, 31 and 34, winning percentage of 477, 18 and a half games out of first. Remember, they were the defending champions, but the magic of 1945 was gone. The first place team was the Kansas City Monarchs, who were 50 and 16, winning percentage of 758. Wow. Second place, the Birmingham Black Barons, 31 and 26, 14 and a half games out of first. Third place, the Cleveland Buckeyes, 31 and 34. Fourth place, the Memphis Red Sox, 34 and 38. Fifth place, the Cincinnati Indianapolis Clowns, 31 and 41. And in sixth and last place, Chica the Chicago American Giants, who were 31 and 53, winning percentage of 369. 28 games out of first. And to misquote a famous song, where have you gone, uh, Rube Foster? Of course, Rube Foster, who had established the Chicago American Giants. Uh, historian Mark Rabowski wrote, quote, For black America, arguably the most consequential date of the century was October 23, 1945. On that day, acting as proxy for Branch Rickey, the Montreal Royals president, Hector Racine announced the signing of Jackie Robinson by the Brooklyn Dodgers before introducing a confident, smiling Robinson to reporters. So this was the beginning of the integration of MLB, although Robinson played in the minor leagues in 1946. But still, it was, a, it was, a, it was, it was the beginning of a new era. Come Posey died on the eve of the 1946 season. And he had lung cancer at age 55. This was a tremendous loss. Uh, Josh Gibson led the, 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 the Negro National League with 18 home runs in 1946, and he hit 361. Tragically, he was also dying. Of a, he had a brain tuber, tumor, and he never got, didn't get medical care in time. The Dodgers also signed, in addition to uh, Jackie Robinson, Roy Campanella, John Wright, and Don Newcomb. So they had four... Uh, African-American players in their minor league system. On May 14th, 46, well, another, another player, that Ricky uh, purchased, he purchased Roy Partlow from the Philadelphia Stars for $1,000. This was the first compensation that was paid for a Negro League player. He hadn't paid anything for the other, these other fellows. Uh, the Buckeyes in 1946 had a white player on the team, Eddie Klepp from Erie, Pennsylvania, and so they uh, integrated in the opposite way. And Klepp was a semi semi pro player, uh, who had a lot of success. He he had trouble in the preseason because they they, they had pre spring training in Birmingham, Alabama, and one game was not allowed to play. He had to sit in the white section. Uh, he was he only played a few games. He was released in June because uh, apparently he had. Supposedly mediocre talent. Now back to Cum Posey, there's a good quote about him. Quote, the, saga the sagacious sportsman who made the Homestead Grays as magic a name in the baseball world as Joe Lewis in the fistic firmament. Now this, of course, going back again to the famous meeting between Branch Rickey and Jackie Robinson. And uh, Robin Jackie Robinson said, quote, Mr. Rickey, do you want a ball player who's afraid to fight back? And Ricky sp responded, quote, I want a player with guts enough not to fight back. And uh, Robinson said, quote, I will not forget that I am a representative of a whole race of people who are pulling for me. Now, Jackie Robinson in 1946 with the Montreal uh, Royals led the league, the International League, with an average of 349. He scored 113 runs and was second in the league in stolen bases with 40. And uh, his team won the International League title, and then they, had, they also won the Little World Series against the Louisville Colonels. Roy Campanella was playing for Nashua, also in the Brooklyn Dodgers system in 1946, and he had 290 with 13 home runs and 96 RBIs. In July, his manager, Walter Alston, 
was ejected from a game, and Campanella was the manager that day. He was the first African American manager of a white of a white in white baseball. Roy Campanella said this about his about his meeting with Branch Rickey. Quote, the first thing I noticed about Branch Rickey was his eyebrows. They were thick and wild growing. They came o- over his horn rimmed glasses. He was chewing an unlit cigar. His eyes were alert and probing. And his grip when we shook hands across the big mahogany desk was firm and powerful. As I said, uh, Campanella, Roy Campanella was with Nashua, Nashua, New Hampshire in the minor leagues. And the, again, in the Dodgers system, there was a local poultry farmer in the Nashua, New Hampshire area who offered to give 100 baby chicks for every, to a player every time he hit a home run. And Campanella that year hit 14 home runs. And Campanella said, quote, At the end of the regular season, I shipped 1,400 baby chicks home to Philadelphia, and Pop started a little poultry farm just outside of town. Again, back to Walter Alston, the Nashua manager. He told Campanella uh, at one point in the season that he wanted Campy to be the manager if he was ever ejected from a game, which, which did happen. And he said, quote, Roy, you're a little bit older than the other players on the club and a great deal more experienced. They respect you. And Campanella responded, quote, and wrote, quote, I had a lump in my throat this big. I was so proud I nearly bust. And in the game, Campanella, as manager, had Don Newcomb going into the game as a pinch hitter. And he had a home run, and the team had a comeback win 7-5. to five. And Campanella said, quote, the fellows really put on a show for me in the, in the clubhouse after the game. They said I was the greatest manager since John McGraw. Campanella was the MVP of the New England League in 1946. Uh, Buck O'Neill led the Kansas City Monarchs in the Negro American League with a 350 average. Effa Manley, the Newark Eagles owner in the Na- Negro National League, said this, quote, Branch Rickey took Jackie Robinson, Don Newcomb, and Roy Campanella from our Negro baseball, and didn't even say thank you. He took Don Newcomb from me, so I know what I'm talking about. And so F. F. Mattingly wrote several letters to Branch Rickey protesting the lack of payment for Don Newcomb, but never received an answer. Several of the players from the 1945 Buckeyes were playing in Latin America in 1946, and this was a, a, a big reason why they declined. Again, their Buckeyes spring training was in, in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, there, was, there was one interesting promotion the team had, a bathing beauty contest on July 4th, I believe at League Park, a $100 prize. Now, at, as I said, integration was coming to MLB. Of course, there were these four black players in, in the minors. And this led to the end of Negro League Baseball in, in a few years because African American, especially in 1947 when Jackie Robinson was playing for the Dodgers, probably every African American in the country supported the Dodgers. And then, and then as, 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 more player, as more African Americans entered MLB, the fans, black fans, uh, really reduced their support for the Negro Leagues and became uh, and supported the MLB teams. And because of the African-American players. In 1978, Effa Manley said this, quote, Every time I see the Dodgers get beat, I say they don't deserve to win for what they did to Negro baseball. Of course, she ended up losing her team when the, when the Negro Leagues and her business, when her and her husband's business, when the, league fo- when the league folded. Okay, for the 1946 Buckeyes, Quincy Troop was back as the player manager, and he was the starting catcher. And the, the statistics for the 46 Buckeyes are very meager. Uh, according to the stats I have, True batted 194 with seven hits. He scored six runs, had two doubles, a triple, a home run, five RBIs, nine walks, and 13 games. And uh, Troop was with, with the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1944 to 1947. He was the player manager of the 1945 World Series, Negro League World Series champions, Cleveland Buckeyes, Quincy Troop. Archie Ware was at first base. Ware batted 423 with 22 hits. He scored 12 runs, three doubles, nine RBIs, a stolen base, three walks, and 13 games. Again, these statistics are very, very incomplete. Very, very, very unfortunate. Ware played for the Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942 and the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1943 to 1948. Archie Ware. 
Johnny Cowan was at second base. Cowan batted 286 with 14 hits. He scored eight runs, had a double, eight RBIs, two walks in 13 games. Cowan played for the Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942 and the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1944 to 1947. Johnny Cowan. Leon Kelman was a new third baseman. Kelman batted 295 with 13 hits. He scored eight runs, had seven RBIs, a stolen base, seven walks in 14 games. During his career, Kelman played third base, second base, catcher, outfielder, and pitcher. He played for the Cleveland Buckeyes, the Louisville Buckeyes, Memphis Red Sox, in Mexico for Nuevo Laredo, Yucatan, and Veracruz, and the Indianapolis Clowns between 1946 and 1952. Kelman was a native of Panama in Central America. He was a good hitter with power, had a good arm, was a very versatile player, an, aver an average fielder with mediocre speed. He won a Negro American League title with the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1947. Kelman had a 15-year career. He also played in Venezuela. In 1946, he played for General Electric in Panama and hit 370. And then he also played for Spur Cola and hit 357 in 1949 and 343 in 1951. Kelman was born in 1918 in Gatun, Panama, and died in 2003 in Miami, Florida at age 84. For his career, he batted 298 with 36 hits. He scored 22 runs. This is in the Negro Leagues. Four doubles, three triples, a home run, 22 RBIs, a stolen base, 15 walks in 39 games. He was the, uh, as I said, he was also a catcher. He played catcher, corner outfielder, and third base. He was a four-time Negro League All-Star from 1947 to 1950. In 1941, he played in the Baseball World Cup in Havana, Cuba. The 1947 World Series, Negro League World Series, Kelman hit 400. He paved the way for Panama, 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 players from Panama to play Major League Baseball. Guys like Rod Carew, Ben Ogilvy, Mariano Rivera, and Manny Sanguian. Leon Kelman. Ralph Wyatt played shortstop. They called him Pepper. He batted 097 with three hits. He scored two runs, had two triples, an RBI in seven games. Wyatt played shortstop and second base during his career. He played for the Chicago American Giants, Homestead Grays, and Cleveland Buckeyes between 1941 and 1946. Wyatt was a slick fielding shortstop. 46 was the end of his Negro League career. He was born in 1917 in Chicago, Illinois, and died in 1990 in Auburn Park, Illinois at age 72. For his career, he batted 249 with 103 hits. He scored 57 runs, six doubles, nine triples, a home run, 36 RBIs, 8 stolen bases, 30 walks in 105 games. Ralph Wyatt. Buddy Armour was back in left field. Armour batted 302 with 13 hits. He scored 8 runs, had 2 doubles, 7 RBIs, 5 walks in 13 games. Armour was with Cleveland, the Cleveland Buckeyes, from 1944 to 1946. This was the end of his time in Cleveland. His pro baseball career continued until 1951. Buddy Armour. Sam the Jet Jethro was in center field. Jethro batted 259 with 15 hits. He scored 11 runs, two doubles, a triple, a home run, 10 RBIs, three stolen bases, four walks in 14 games. Jethro played for the Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942 and the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1943 to 1948. Sam Jethro. Willie Grace was in right field. Grace batted 360 with 18 hits. Scored four runs, had a double, seven RBIs, a walk in 13 games. He also did a little pitching. Grace had no decisions and an ERA of 7.71. One game and four and two-thirds innings pitched. Grace, Grace played for the Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942 and the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1943 to 1948 and in 1950. Willie Grace. Other bench players included George Meyer, Miner, who played some left field, Miner batted 476. He had 10 hits. He scored five runs, had a triple, an RBI, two walks in seven games. And Miner was with the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1944 to 1948. George Miner. Billy Horn played some second base. He batted 231 with three hits and 13 at bats, two RBIs, two walks in three games. Horn played for the Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942 and the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1943 to 1946. This was the end of his time in Cleveland. His pro baseball career continued until 1951. Billy Horn. Eli Chisholm played some center field. His given name was Elijah. They called him Little Chiss. He batted 286 with four hits. He scored three runs, two doubles, two RBIs, a stolen base, and seven games. 
He was an outfielder. He played for the St. Louis Stars, Cleveland Buckeyes, and Birmingham Black Barons between 1937 and 1951. Chisholm was a light-hitting outfielder with good speed and was a successful base stealer. He was born in 1916 in Mariana, Arkansas, and died in 1982 in Kirkwood, Missouri at age 65. For his career, he batted 322 with 19 hits. He scored 12 runs, 5 doubles, 3 triples, 6 RBIs, 2 stolen bases, a walk in 20 games. Eli Chisholm. Tommy Harris was a spare catcher. Harris batted 111 with 1 hit and 8 at-bats. Scored two runs, had a home run, three RBIs, a walk in four games. Harris played for the Cleveland Buckeyes and Louisville Buckeyes between 1946 and 1949. He was a backup catcher. He won a Negro American League title with the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1947. He was born in 1923 in Canton, Ohio, and died in 1991 in Stone Mountain, Georgia at age 67. For his career, he batted 149 with 11 hits. He scored eight runs, two doubles, two home runs, 10 RBIs, two walks in 23 games. Tommy Harris. Al Smith played some third base. His given name was Alphonse. They called him Al or Fuzzy. He batted 125 with one hit and eight at-bats. He scored a run, had a stolen base, a walk in three games. In his career, he played shortstop, third base, and left field. Smith played for the Cleveland Buckeyes in the minor leagues for Wilkes Barr, San Diego and Indianapolis, in MLB for the Cleveland Indians and Chicago White Sox, and also the Baltimore Orioles and Boston Red Sox. And, and then he also played in Puerto Rico for Ponce. His playing career was from 1946 to 1964. Smith went to high school in St. Louis, Missouri. He won a Negro, League, Amer- Negro American League pennant with Cleveland in 1947. In 1948, he signed with the Cleveland Indians and played in the minor leagues. That year for Wilkes Barr and hit 316. In 1953, he was with the Cleveland Indians. And, and he won a, an American League pennant with the Cleveland Indians in 1954. 1955, with the Tribe, he batted 306 with 22 home runs. 1961, with the White Sox, he had 28 home runs. Smith was born in 1928 in Kirkwood, Missouri, and died in 2002 in Hammond, Indiana, at age 73. His Negro League career, he batted 327 with 37 hits. He scored 17 runs, 7 doubles, 5 triples, 4 home runs, 22 RBIs, 3 stolen bases, 11 walks in 32 games. For his MLB career, he batted 272 with 164 home runs. Wow, 676 RBIs. He, he's, he was a, an all-star in, in the MLB for, in 1955 with the Cleveland Indians and 1960 with the White Sox. He was, he's one of the greatest, he was, he was uh, ranked one of the greatest Cleveland, 100 greatest Cleveland Indians of all time. He's in the Greater Akron Baseball Hall of Fame. In, high school, in a high school football game, he had 10 touchdowns in one game. Also, as a youth, he was a Golden Gloves boxing champion. In the MLB, he had 1,458 hits. Smith is depicted in a famous photograph uh, from the 1959 World Series. There was a fly ball, actually a home run ball. Smith went to the outfield wall, and a fan accidentally knocked over a, a, a cup of beer that went in his face. So uh, he won an American League title in 1959 with the White Sox. And in that, in that uh, Smith said that he autographed uh, 200,000 copies of the famous photo. That game was in Comiskey Park in Chicago. After he retired, he was a manager for the Chicago Parks District Baseball Program. He's also the supervisor for the recreation for recreation for the city of Ogden Park, Illinois, and worked in community relations for the Chicago White Sox. 1958, he was acquired by the White Sox uh, and was in a slump and was unpopular. Bill Veck owned the White Sox at that time and had an Al Smith night. Those. Uh, Fans who were named Smith, Smythe, Schmidt, or Smith with an E were admitted free with a button, I'm a Smith, and I'm for Al. Al Smith. Visiel Richardson played some shortstop. He batted five times, did not have a hit, scored a run, walked once in two games. Richardson was with the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1946. He was a fringe player and born in 1923. Visiel Richardson. John Henry Oliver played some shortstop. He batted 200 with one hit and five at bats in one game. He played shortstop and second base. Oliver played for the Memphis Red Sox and Cleveland Buckeyes from between 1945 and 1946. 
He was a middle infielder and a reserve player. He started his career in the last year of the Second World War. For his career, he batted 220 with nine hits. He scored five runs, had three RBIs, a stolen base, five walks in 11 games. John Henry Oliver. Now the pitching staff, Eugene Bremer was the ace pitcher. Bremer was 2-0 with an ERA of 5.24. Six games, five starts, two complete games, 34 and a third innings pitched and 10 strikeouts. Bremer batted 250 with four hits. He scored a run, had three doubles, an RBI in six games. Bremer was with the Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942 and the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1943 uh, to 1948. He injured his right hand in spring training and struggled to remain healthy much of the year. Eugene Bremer. Vibbert, Vibbert Clark, they called him uh, Webbo, was 1-2 and two with an ERA of 6.45. Four games, all starts, a complete game, 22 in the third innings pitched and eight strikeouts. Clark batted 111 with one hit and nine at-bats. He scored two runs, had an RBI and a walk in five games. Clark played for the Cleveland Buckeyes, Louisville Buckeyes, Mem- and Memphis Red Sox, and the minor leagues for Charlotte, and in, and, in, and in MLB for the Washington Senators from 1946 to 1955. He's a native of Panama in Central America. He had a good fastball, pretty good curve, and a fair, had fair control. He was in the Negro Leagues for five years. In, 40, in the 1947 Buckeyes, he was the ace pitcher, won 11-2, and, and helped Cleveland win a Negro American League pennant. He spent 10 winners playing in Panama. In Charlotte, in the minor leagues, in 1955, he was 16-12. and 12. He was born in 1928 in Cologne, Panama, and died in 1970 in Cristobal, Panama, at age 42. His career in the Negro Leagues, he was 8-6 with an ERA of 4.40, 17 games, 15 starts, 9 complete games, a shutout, 100 in the third innings pitched, and 41 strikeouts. He batted 333 with 14 hits and scored 6 runs, had a double, 3 RBIs, a stolen base, and a walk in 18 games. In the Major Leagues, he had no decisions and an ERA of 4.64, Nine strikeouts and 21 and a third innings pitched. Minor leagues, he played for the Charlotte Hornets and the Dallas Eagles and the Minneapolis Millers. In Mexico, he played for the Diablos Rojos del Mexico and the Tecolotes de Nuevo Laredo. Vibbert Clark. Doc Bracken was 0-2 with an ERA of 5.84. Two games, both starts, 12 and a third innings pitched and 15 strikeouts. Bracken batted six times, did not have a hit in two games. He played for the St. Louis Stars and Cleveland Buckeyes between 1940 and 1947. In the Second World War, he was in the U.S. Navy and played baseball at the Great Lakes Naval Base and was 13-1 there. He was born in 1915 in Paducah, Kentucky, and died in 1994 in St. Louis, Missouri at age 78. For his career, he was 3-2 with an ERA of 3.19, five games, four starts a complete game, 36 and two-thirds innings pitched and 34 strikeouts. He batted 125 in his career, had two hits and 16 at-bats, scored two runs, had two RBIs in five games. In the minor leagues, he was 13-14 and 14 with an ERA of 4.48, 29 games, 15 starts, nine complete games, a shutout, 209 innings pitched and 85 strikeouts. Doc Bracken. Chet Brewer was 0-1 with an ERA of 3.38, one game, which was a start, eight, eight innings pitched and two strikeouts. Brewer batted 60, 67 with two hits and three at-bats. He scored a run in one game. Brewer, Brewer was with the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1942 to 1943, and from 1946 to 1948, Chet Brewer. Hosea Allen was 2-1 with an ERA of 6.06. Five games, one start, a complete game, 16 in the third innings, pitched in seven strikeouts. Allen batted 286 with two hits and seven at bats. He had an RBI in five games. He was a pitcher and an outfielder. Played for the Jacksonville Red Caps and Cincinnati Clowns, Cincinnati Indianapolis Clowns, the Cleveland Buckeyes, the Indianapolis Clowns, and the Memphis Red Sox between 1942 and 1947. It was written that he pitched without distinction. He was born in 1918 in Jacksonville, Florida, and 1948 in Tampa, Florida, at age 29. For his career, he was 2-6 with an ERA of 6.43. 14 games, 7 starts, 3 complete games, 63 innings pitched, and 30 strikeouts. He batted 333 in his career with 8 hits. He scored 3 runs, had 5 RBIs, and a walk. Hosea Allen. Frank Carswell was 0-1 with an ERA of 9.45, five games, a start, six and a two-thirds innings pitch, and a strikeout. 
batted four times, did not have a hit in five games. Carswell was with the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1944 to 1948. Frank Carswell. John Brown had no decisions in an ERA of 1.80. One game, five innings switched and three strikeouts. He batted once and did not have a hit in one game. Brown was with the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1944 to 1946. And this was the end of his time in Cleveland. His Negro League baseball career continued until 1949. John Brown. Sam Woods had no decisions in an ERA of 12.27. One game, three and two thirds, and he pitched and two strikeouts. He was three and one. He was three and one that year in the Negro League baseball. He batted once and did did not have a hit in one game. He played for the Cleveland Buckeyes, Memphis Red Sox, and the minor leagues for Pampa in West Texas in, in the New Mexico League from 1946 to 1957. He was born in 1920 in, in Springfield, Ohio and died in 1983 in Las Vegas, Nevada at age 63. For his career in the Negro Leagues, he was 0-1 with an ERA of 8.64. Four games, two starts, 16 and two-thirds innings pitched, and eight strikeouts. In the minor leagues, he was 28-26 with 100, 108, 107 games, 57 starts, 17 complete games, two shutouts, 434 innings pitched, and 176 strikeouts. Sam Woods, Alonzo... <coughs> Alonzo Boone had no decisions in an ERA of 0.00. One game, a save, and two and two-thirds innings pitched. He batted once and did not have a hit in one game. Boone played for the Cleveland Cubs in 1931, the Cleveland Bears from 1939 to 1940, the Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942, and the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1943, from 1945 to 1948, and in 1950. Alonzo Boone. Alex Singleton had no decisions in an ERA of 6.75. One game, one and a third innings pitched, and he's three strikeouts. He did not bat, and his career was his Negro League career was just with the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1946. Alex Singleton, Walter Birch was 0-1 with an ERA of 27.00. One game, one innings pitched, one inning pitched, and a strikeout. He did not bat. Birch played for the Cleveland Bears in 1939. The Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942, and the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1943 to 1944 and in 1946. And this was the end of his Negro League baseball career. Walter Birch. Willie Hubert had no decisions in an ERA of 9.00. One game, one, innings, one inning pitched, and one earned run allowed. He did not bat. Hubert played for the Cle- Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942, and the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1946. Willie Hubert. Willie Jefferson had no decisions and an ERA of 135.00. One game, a third of an innings pitched, and five earned runs allowed. He did not bat. Most of the season, Jefferson was playing in Central America. He played for the Cincinnati Cleveland Buckeyes in 1942 and the Cleveland Buckeyes from 1943 to 1946. This was the end of his time in Cleveland. His pro baseball career continued until 1951. Willie Jefferson player by the name of Fleming, no first name indicated, had no decisions in an ERA of 0.00. One game, a third of an innings pitched, and zero earned runs allowed. He did not bat. Fleming play, Fleming's career was just with the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1946. A guy named Fleming. And finally, Eddie Klepp uh, pitched in three games. There are no statistics for him. And uh, on May 20, he, he, was, he was the white, white fellow who played for the Buckeyes. On May 29th, he pitched seven innings and got an 8-6 victory against the Chicago American Giants. Klepp was born in 1918 in Erie, Pennsylvania and died in 1981 at age 63. He was a singer-sports writer. Chuck Brodsky wrote a song called The Ballad of Eddie Klepp. Klepp also played baseball at the Rockview State Prison in central Pennsylvania. He died at a state home in Los Angeles, California of alcoholism. There's a, there's a film based on his life story that was sold to Adam Sandler's production company. Now, the, bat, the ballad of Eddie Klepp goes like this, quote, The war had finally ended, and America had changed. It had be, beaten back the Nazis, but, but the Jim Crow laws remained. There was talk of state, staging marches and talk of civil rights. There was talk about a Negro playing baseball with the whites. He walked into the clubhouse, and the card players quit playing. Everybody stopped in the middle of what they were saying. It was just like when the sheriff walks into the saloon. He said, my name's Eddie, 
as he looked around the room. This man here is to play baseball, the manager said to the team. We're all going to have to live with this. Oh, uh, that's not what I mean. You know what I mean. And they all did. It went without saying. The card players looked at their hands and they went on with their playing. They ran him off the field before a game in Birmingham one night. Made him sit up in the grandstand in the section marked for whites. In his Cleveland Buckeyes uniform, it was a new twist in the law. The marshals kept their eyes on him and the hecklers ate him raw. Eddie Klepp, he should have run the bases in reverse. A white man in the Negro Leagues, that had to be a first. He could not ride the same buses or stay in the same hotels. He could not eat in the same restaurants. You couldn't have mixed, you couldn't have mixed clientele. So while Jackie played for Brooklyn and wore the Dodger blue, Eddie crossed the color line, the one without a cue. A white man in the Negro Leagues might as well have been a Jew. Now you mention the name of Eddie Klepp, and most everyone says, Who? Now, Klepp, Klepp apparently was somewhat troubled. He had a criminal record of larceny, assault, and battery, and burglary. He did win a game in 1946. He also worked during his life as a clerk, a laborer, truck driver, painter, a waiter, a bowling, a bowling alley pin sticker. Klepp was liked by his teammates, and he was good friends with Willie Grace, who lent him a Klepp a suit, quote, so he'd look decent. Willie Grace said this, quote, There wasn't a racist bone in him. He smoked and drank with the rest of the players. During spring training, training Klepp received, quote, taunts, insults, and threats in the South. But he showed, quote, showed true blue and stayed with the team despite harsh treatment from Southerners. Eddie Klepp. After the uh, regular season, the, the Negro League World Series was played, and the Newark Eagles, the Negro National League champions defeated the Kansas City Monarchs, Negro American League champions, four games to three. The first game was played at the Polo Grounds in New York City. Game two at Rupert Stadium in Newark, New Jersey. Game three, games three and four at Blues Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. Game five in Comiskey Park, Chicago. And game six and seven at Rupert Stadium in Newark, New Jersey. Hall of Famers in the, in the World Series included... For Newark, Leon Day, Larry Doby, Monte Irvin, and Biz Mackey, the manager. For Kansas City, Willard Brown, Satchel Page, and Hilton Smith. Now, in, back in 1888, the, 1888, the Cuban Giants were the Negro League champions, and they received a trophy, which was a silver baseball. And one of the players on the team was named Ben Holmes, who kept this trophy over the years. And by 1946, he was supporting the Eagles, and he, he, brought, he brought the trophy to, to the first game in Newark, the silver baseball. And it was used for a first ceremonial pitch. By, it was thrown out by Joe Lewis, the heavyweight boxing champion. Game 7 of the World, Negro League World Series was in Newark, Newark, New Jersey. In the ninth inning, the Eagles, the Newark Eagles were up 3-2. to up three to two. Uh, but the Monarchs had two, two men on and two out with Buck O'Neill batting. And O'Neill uh, hit, hit a long drive to deep center. And Buck O'Neill remembered, quote, I began thinking I might have an inside the park home run or, or at least a triple. Leon Day, however, was on his horse. I don't know how he did it, but he ran that ball down and made an amazing catch. Better even than the one Willie Mays made on Vic Wirtz in the 1954 World Series. Everyone on our bench just stood there with our mouths hanging open. Leon Day had saved the day for Newark. He also had saved the World Series. That would have uh, given the Monarchs a lead. Uh, the, now the Newark Eagles received, uh, each of the players received rings for the, winning the World Series in 1946 with an intricately designed eagle, a 45-carat diamond in the player's position and number on the, on the ring. Now, for 1946, the best hitter in the Negro Leagues was Larry Doby of the Newark Eagles, and the best pitcher was Barney Brown of the Philadelphia Stars. So that's the story of the 1946 uh, Cleveland Buckeyes. They had kind of a tough year, but they were our guys. They, they had Cleveland on their uniform. Uh, God bless the fellows who played for the Cleveland Buckeyes in 1946 and everyone else associated with the team, including the fans, especially the Spanish-American War veterans, First World War veterans, and Second World War veterans. Captains of the Cuyahoga, lovers of Lake Erie, 
Terminal Tower Power, fans of the free stamp statue in the Fountain of Eternal Life, Euclid Avenue Electricity, Severance Hall Stalwarts, Cleveland Museum of Art Enthusiasts, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum Rebels, Christmas Story House Happy People, Museum of Contemporary Art Maniacs, Cleveland Botanical Garden Goers, Old Arcade Admirers, Playhouse Square Seers, Settlers Landing Park Purists, Western Reserve Historical Society Wonders, First Energy Stadium Friends, Progressive Field Pals, Quick and Loans Arena uh, Enthusiasts, Cuyahoga Valley National Park Pioneers, and Great Lakes Science Center Supporters. Tribe, Browns, Cavs, Monsters, Gladiators, and Fusion Rule. Cleveland City, of, Cleveland City of Champions. Cleveland is the best location in the nation on the north coast of America. New York is the Big Apple. Cleveland is a plum. We've started the season. 20, 2019 season. Go, Tribe. This is our year. It's been 71 years since 1948. You might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. Thanks so much for watching. Really, I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.